Hi, it's Richard from Original Outdoors. In this new short tutorial series, I'm gonna be showing you some of the basics of ax craft. Starting off with this video, which is how to cut down this tree using this ax. But we've also got this video, which is snedding, how to remove the branches from the tree once you've felled it. This video, which is about how to cross cut the main trunk of the tree and how to cut it to a usable length and the length you want it to be. And then this video about how to shape that piece of wood once you've extracted it from the tree. So you can go and watch all of those after this video, they're all online now. But for now, I'm just gonna show you how to cut down this tree using this ax. So first you're going to need a tree. So I've got this one, which is a Western Hemlock Spruce. So this is a non-native in the UK and it's self-seeded from one of the bigger spruces around here. I not only have the permission of the landowner to cut this tree down, I'm actually doing it under their instruction. This is part of their management plan for this woodland. They're gradually returning it to native broadleaf trees. So this tree is gonna come out fairly soon anyway. So we're gonna use it for the tutorial. Next, you're going to need to closely examine your tree and see if it is leaning in a certain direction or if there are any other trees that it might get snagged up on when it falls. Be aware of any trees that are leaning at a steep angle, showing signs of cracks or rot, and any that have dead branches over your working area because these might break off and drop on you whilst you're working with the axe. Once you've decided which way your tree is going to fall, then you can identify a landing area. This might be dictated by how close other trees are, their position relative to the tree that you're going to cut down, or lots of other factors. Try to look for a gap where you can safely drop your tree into and then work on it afterwards. There is also the height of the tree to consider. You need a space at least as long as a tree is tall. A common mistake is misjudging how tall a tree actually is and then getting the top of the tree caught up in another tree once you've dropped it. So we've established that this tree is fine to cut. It's not going to get caught up up there anywhere. It's got plenty of room to fall that way. It's already leaning that way slightly. So this is the side where I need to make my first cut. You always make your first cut on the side that will be on the ground once the tree's fallen, on the side that you want it to fall towards. That first cut does two things. It removes material that's supporting this side of the tree. As I say, the tree is leaning that way slightly anyway, which means all of this side of the tree is being squeezed together like that. So it's like little support columns. And by taking a wedge out of here, you're taking away some of the supporting material, leaving only the stuff at the back, which is in tension, which is being stretched. It also, by removing that wedge that making that first cut you create a space for the tree to fold in on itself so you will leave a little bit of material in the middle here which will act like a hinge but the tree will then close in on that negative wedge shape so it, instead of just cutting horizontally like that which would mean that the tree would kick back up at the back or roll off to the side by putting a wedge in there it means it can close all the way to horizontal before it jumps and snaps off so that is where we're going to make our first cut and we want to make it about 12 inches 30 centimeters above the ground so about here that's partly because that's a nice comfortable working height for an adult swinging an axe it gives you plenty of room and it's it's a nice ergonomic place to cut into that tree but also it gives you the most material above that cut that you can use before it starts to spread out into a wider tree down here. It means you're unlikely to hit the ground. It means that physics is working in your favor because you have enough material below the cut to provide a stable base, but enough material above to make sure there's enough weight to bring the tree down. So there's lots of reasons for putting the cut there, but around 12 inches, 30 centimeters above the ground and the cut on the same side that the tree is going to be falling. So next up, you wanna think about your body positioning. And I know it sounds like I'm always going on about axe safety and being safe with this kind of thing, but to be honest, it's really easy to bugger this up and end up with a life-changing injury. So you are gonna hear me talking about safety again. This kind of axe, I tend to use one-handed quite a lot, either here or closer to the head here. And if I'm using it one-handed to cut and make that first undercut into the tree, then what I'll do is position my body a little bit like this so that if I miss 
on that swing or it deflects off the tree, it's likely to end up over here in clean airspace. Not, if I was standing here, say, in my leg. We've got this whole other video about the safe places that an axe can end up that you're allowed to bury an axe. And that video is here. You can go and watch it after this one. But for now, let's have a look at another type of axe. So I'm going to be using for the rest of this tutorial a the small felling axe that you saw me have earlier. So if you have got a two-handed axe like this, then you can position your body slightly differently. So you need a bit more room to swing an axe like this, and you're not going to be holding it like that. You're probably going to be bringing it down like that. So you need to make sure that you've got enough working space around you, that you've cleared away any branches that you can to make that working area as safe and easy to use as possible. And you've established you know, exactly where your cut wants to be. What I tend to do is like make a little mark just above and below where I want that cut to be so I've got something to aim for. And then you position your body so that if you do miss, it'll just swing off into clean airspace like that. So it's everything's safe and you do that every single time. that's all worked out pretty much as I hoped it would. I've got a wedge cut, a, an undercut, a gob cut, whatever you're going to call it, that goes about halfway into the tree. Uh, it is at the right angle. By that I mean put my axe head in there, then the axe shaft is pointing in the direction I want the tree to fall. This line, which is this bit here at the back of the wedge, needs to be 90 degrees to where I want the tree to fall. Also it needs to be completely level or thereabouts. That's difficult to achieve sometimes, particularly if you're fairly tall, because you're cutting often at a downward angle like that, and you end up making a diagonal cut. So you need to correct it on the last few cuts and just cut it to being a level wedge shape. That's so that when the tree falls, it doesn't roll off downhill on its own cut and act in an unpredictable way. It falls nice and straight. Next, I need to make my back cut, which is going to be over on this side. So the fibres on this side of the tree are in tension, they're being stretched. The fibres on this side were in compression, they were being squeezed. And this is what remains of the fibres that were being squeezed there and all these wood chips on the floor. So that first set of cuts I made was at a steep downhill, downward angle like that. What I'm doing there is cutting through the bundles of fibres that make up this tree. Trees are just bundles of fibres running vertically. And by cutting at a steep downward angle, I was able to slice through as many of those fibres as I could with each swing and then come along a few swings later and cut through the bottom of the chips. So that way I can remove a lot of material very, very quickly and in much fewer swings than it would take if I was just going into a little narrow notch like that. You actually want to make quite a big notch, quite a big cut like that. So that's pretty much what I'm aiming for every time. So next I need to make the back cut. I need to again work out how high it's going to be. So this notch here and this notch here correspond to the top and the bottom of the undercut from this side. I don't do this on every cut, I just, I've just i done it for the purposes of the video. I want my back cut, middle of it, to be about here, just below halfway between the two. I don't want to cut all the way through the tree. I'm only going to go about 30% of the way into the tree. That's going to leave a piece of wood in between this cut and that cut. That's going to act as my hinge. That's going to be the point the tree rotates around when it falls and so it doesn't push back towards me or kick up and it should all stay attached with this bit attached to the stump down here and should be pretty safe. I could do that cut with a small folding barco saw like this or any other sort of suitable green wood saw and just cut like that careful to keep my angle so that it's 90 degrees to where I want the tree to fall but cut through the back of the tree like that and then maybe put a little bit of pressure up here to make it fall 
and it would fall nice and safely like that. That's not what I'm going to do for this tutorial because it's all about axes, but to do it with an axe is effectively the same thing as you did on this side, but at a slightly smaller scale and slightly higher up. So that went pretty much as planned. This is what I wanted here. This is the back cut and this is the remains of the undercut under here. This raggedy bit here is where the wood tore after it fell over. So this is the hinge that I was talking about earlier. This is the remains of the material that was keeping the tree attached to the stump as it fell. So it gave it something to rotate around rather than just falling off the stump and hitting the ground unexpectedly. And this hinge is roughly parallel. I think it's slightly narrower at this end than it is at this end, but that's that's okay. I mean, if it's for cutting with an ax, it's fine. If it was a with a cut with a chainsaw, I'd want that to be pretty much bang on parallel. But with an ax, that's okay. If this had been more of a triangular shape and had been really wide here and then very narrow at this end, then it means that I would have cut too far into the tree with the axe either on the undercut or on the back cut, and I w w hadn't got my cuts lined up. But as it is, that's about fine. So that's what you're looking for. And it's actually still just about attached. I could probably move it off this stump. There are a few fibers here where it's still attached, but a good poke and this would fall off. So that's it, tree on the ground. I've not lost any blood. I've not hurt anybody, I've not hurt myself, not damaged anything. It's fallen in the direction I wanted it to do, and I've done everything about as well as I could possibly do with an axe. So that's the mission accomplished for me. My next step, which is going to be in the next video, is removing the branches from the tree and then cross-cutting it and then doing some more things with this bit of wood. I mentioned earlier on in the video that I wanted to talk about the legal side of things and some other considerations. So this is where it's on you. In most cases, you can't just wander onto private land or publicly owned land and start felling trees because you want to, or because you want to practice with your axe, or because you want to do it for the gram or for YouTube or something else. You need, in most cases, to get the permission for the landowner or to do your research and to make sure that you can cut trees down in that area if it's part of a national park or something like that overseas. I'm not going to say uh, I'm not going to talk about the law just for the UK because I think we've got an international audience watching this. So you need to do the research for your country or the country you're going to. Uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them for uh, for the UK and for anywhere else I know about. And if you see a question unanswered, then you can answer it. You also want to consider things like ecological and environmental considerations, things like nesting birds. So we've got a bird's nest there just 50 meters away in a different tree which we've stayed well away from and we know where the nests are in the trees around here and we, we know to stay away from them and leave the birds in peace and you need to do those checks before you start felling trees you need to make sure that there aren't any birds nesting in there consider the time of year when the birds are going to be nesting and the fledglings are still in the nest and you don't want to disturb them there's other things you consider like bats bats roosting cracks in trees so you want to be aware of that and there's a whole heap of ethical considerations there as well one of which is does the tree actually need to come down I mean, this tree is only 25 30 years old so it's younger than I am. But some of the trees around here, well, even the new-ish conifers, 
they're a hundred years old nearly and the oaks three four hundred years old some of them is a much older oak in the valley uh, a short walk from here these trees have seen a hell of a lot and a lot of people have interacted with them and walked past them and sat under them over the years it doesn't seem right to kill something that has been on this earth for hundreds of years just because you fancy cutting a tree down so don't just start swinging axes around needlessly if there's another way of achieving what you want to do. There are ethical ways of felling trees and managing woodland and what we're doing here today is one of them. So you've got all those things to consider, but you've got to consider your impact on things. You've got to consider the implications for you legally and also in terms of safety and everything else. Thank you for watching. If you like what we do, then like the video, subscribe to the channel and see our other content. We've got reviews and tutorials and a few other things. We've got more on the website on originaloutdoors.co.uk. We run training courses primarily. We train individuals and organizations and the military and uh, emergency services and SAR teams and lots of other people. And you can find more of that com content on here. But if you just want to watch the rest of the videos, then that's absolutely fine too. Whatever you do next, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for watching this far into this video and hopefully I'll see you again next time. Bye.